Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to match number 80 in my Age of Empires 3 series. This is uh, me and Pink playing British against a British player in green playing British, as I said. Or you can look at the title and see that it says British Mirror. So if you're expecting things other than the British Civilization, you will be sorely disappointed. However, if you are enthusiastic and looking forward to the British Civilization, well played in a 1v1 mirror, then this is the video for you. As you can see here, though, I am gathering my crates with an unusual efficiency this game normally I kind of screw things up but as you can see here I got people on food I got villagers coming I got uh, everything being done fairly nicely and look at this as I'm getting to the hundred and first hundred thirty five wood I'm gonna start building my manor houses as soon as I get my villagers going as you can see here boom manor house going down and then as soon as I get another wood crate enough wood gathered I'm gonna have another villager start working on that that way I get all my manor houses being built quickly. That way I get those two extra villagers as soon as possible, giving me a huge advantage. Like if I wait an extra 30 or 40 seconds, that's an extra 30 or 40, 30 or 40 seconds. I don't have another villager. So I'm getting two extra villagers right off the bat by being smart, building my manor houses with my starting gold. And I, I did that, by the way, build two manor houses immediately because I did indeed start with 300 wood uh, in crates rather than 200, which really just allows you to build 300 manors right off the bat. Then you have 50 wood left over, give or take. Uh, or is that 30? 30 wood left over. Uh, as you can see here, I'm trying to micro out this treasure. I found a trapped family of mannequins, maquins, little monkey things, little monkey dudes. Uh, right there up on the map, and I'm like, yes, fabulous treasure to get. Just an absolutely great, great treasure. So I'm going to creep around there and probably crack shot that last guy to get it. Then I realized, oh, I can get this treasure here, and that's some food. And I'm really, really stoked about being able to get it and getting that mannequin treasure. Even though those mannequins, I, I'm saying mannequins, but I know mannequins are the things in stores. So I'm going to call them monkeys, I think. That way I avoid any mistakes. Even though the uh, monkeys themselves are not good against villagers and really can't be used for raiding, they're really good against treasure guardians. So if I get all of them, I'm really going to just be able to now go over every treasure I want. I'll be able to get 80 food, 80 wood, you know, whatever I find, I'll be able to relatively easily grab it. Which is a great place. Now, because I'm playing in a British mirror, I am going to indeed age up with 18 villagers. Normally, British can age up with between 16 to 18. That, of course, includes the three villager card uh, from your home city as your first shipment. And, of course, possibly even uh, whatever villagers you have from your manor houses. I obviously built my manor houses earlier rather than later, which was a good choice, I think. But either ways, as you can see... Um, I am going to age up with 18, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm playing a British player, so British are, is a den, generally a booming sieve, so when I'm playing a booming sieve in a mirror, it doesn't feel worth it to me to try to not play to my unit strength or my uh, civilization strength and be more aggressive, so I am indeed going to play a little bit less aggressive than I normally would. As you can see here, I'm going to grab this treasure, which will be a... Another monkey. So now my monkey army's grown to six. Monkeys are OP. Let me just tell you that right off the bat immediately. As you can see here, I'm about to get to my um, 18th villager, and this is where we need to start talking some strategy. So I am going to go Hussar. I did pick my Hussar deck, and there is a very clever way I name my decks, which you might notice or you might not. Um, I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but generally, well, I'll just spoil it. Generally, I name my deck the unit I want to make backwards. So my Hussar deck is like Raha or some Ra. Ross ugh, or something like that. It's just a clever way for me to keep it in track and as you can see here I decide you know what hey, I can steal this treasure for him and I do feel kind of bad about taking the treasure But I lose treasures every single match like you you saw it in the last match. I lost a treasure so it's it was nice to uh be on the right side of the treasure stealing for once I felt bad, but then he calls me a faggot and I'm like really dude classy and so I went from playing and having fun to I have to whoop your ass because you're a jerk. Like, that's that was what my mindset kind of did at this point. So I think I even started playing better, but uh, I, I, I distracted myself. I am going to go Hussar initially against, uh, the, against him. Partially for, well, not partially. For a few reasons, I think Hussar is a good choice to go. It's very uh, raidable. It, it'll get some pressure on him. And if he overreacts to Hussar, I can... Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, if he if he reacts to Hussar by mono spamming musketeers, I can easily switch without letting him know to longbowmen and build a longbowmen mass and really just start beating him that way. So I'm not too stressed out about that. But as you can see, I get all my discovery age market upgrades. What I know, right? BTM does not do discovery age market upgrades very often. So uh, it was kind of a, a special occasion for me to actually do it. 
But as you can see, I'm going to go for this 80 food treasure. So I'm really cleaning up on the treasures. I've gotten wood and I've gotten food. I've bought upgrades. We're going to be in a really, really strong position. Now, my first building, of course, in the uh, Colonial Age will be a stable. But my first card will actually be 700 gold. And the reason being that I want to pump out Hassar, which costs... A lot of gold. I think 90 gold ahead and 120 food. That sounds reasonable. Let, let, I'll stick with that story. But because I have enough, because I already have 200 wood for my stable and I don't need more wood initially, I'm not gonna bother. Um, I'm not gonna bother going for uh, the 700 wood initially. I'll send the 700 wood as my next ship, and I'd rather have the gold for more hussar. Although considering that I switched villagers onto gold while aging, knowing that I was gonna go hussar, considering that I got 200 uh, gold from aging maybe I didn't need to and he starts flaming me again what a faggot you killed my explorer dude shit happens man and I say that just cuz you know me it's a game you gotta enjoy it oh I was definitely not happy at this point though I was kinda like oh no oh no uh-uh uh-uh you, you don't go there with me man uh, I, I don't like being flamed in in the game I play for fun and uh, I try to, you know, bring to people for fun. So flaming is never a good thing. But as you can see, I'm going to send 700 gold because I am very, very close to populationing myself. And I, and I do that regardless of save or game, unfortunately. But as you can see here, we are going to end up going for some of the, this treasure, uh, fighting a bunch of snow leopards. But it's okay. We're barely going to pull it off. I didn't think we were going to be able to, but we did. So we're okay. And as you can see here, we got some manor house booming going on and a fairly good amount of Hussar 5 ready to pop immediately in our first batch. Now it's not as many units as other civilizations can pop out. In fact, I'm playing this probably too boomy to be honest. If you look at it, think about it, uh, 6, 7 minutes in the game, right? 6 minutes, 30 seconds in the game, first shipment of 5 Hussar, or first batch of units 5 Hussar. It could have been played better on my part. However, if you look here, I'm going to get some villagers rating. I don't know if he wasn't back hurting or what. But I eat one delicious villager, and then I eat another delicious villager. Yum, 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 yum. They were very, very tasty, and I'm going to keep scouting around his base looking for treasures and the such with my explorer and my little snow leopard army. I'm going to be able to get steal the wood treasure that's right inside his base. I didn't even grab the one in my base. I totally missed it until my explorer was on the other side of the map. And then I was like, well, too late for me to do it now, if you know what I mean. But as you can see here, now Green's very, very sensitive to the fact that I'm kind of running around his peripherals and raiding him, and I population myself again you might be saying wait you're populationing yourself with British but you get a villager from each freaking manor house you make why are you populationing yourself here's the reason why I played some off-camera games and I went way too boomy on the manor houses and I found that personally Britain works well with manor houses built in moderation yes it's a humongous humongous help to have manor houses it does a lot for you in fact when you start building up manor houses you get an extra villager however at 135 wood ahead they're not cheap by the way as you can see i started attacking with my my uh, snow monkeys but it seems weird that he runs away because snow monkeys actually have like a 0.1 modifier to villagers on top of their six attack so i think they do 0.6 attack or something like that per turn per village you know so they're not going to do any damage whatsoever so i found it funny that uh he was running away from that, but that's not a problem. As you can see here, I'm actually building manor houses away from my main base, near a herd I want. I build three, and I select them to the herd, but that's because I had a huge surplus of wood at that point, and I wanted to put it into productivity, but what I'm saying is don't burn your wood needlessly. I'm going to use it to get some villagers, but I'm not going to really build more than I need or can afford to, because I could build probably two more on top of that, but then I wouldn't have enough wood to start building longbowmen as well in conjunction with my hussar. And you might be like, wait a minute, didn't in the last video you just say with um with H Hus, you should go musk yes you can but i thought in this video considering that the obvious logical counter to hussar is musketeers it'd be more efficient for me to go longbowmen plus i think they're slightly cheaper they have a longer range and they're it's a little bit of an easier combination in my opinion it requires a little bit more micromanagement but if he goes pure hussar and i go longbowmen and by some freak accident uh i lose my uh hussar or if, I'm sorry, pardon me. Okay, you should always mix your units is what I'm trying to say, right? So I just decided that Hussar Longman, a skirmisher cav mi cavalry mix was a better choice than a heavy infantry uh, cavalry mix because if he went Hussar Longbow or if he went Musketeer Longbow and somehow I made a mistake and I could let my, uh, my, my Hussar get caught by his Musketeers, 
then my musketeers will lose a fight to his mixed longbowmen uh, musketeer army. It, that is if he mixes infantry, which you always should. Now, so what I was doing is I was assuming he was going to mix types of infantry because that seemed to me the reasonable thing to do. So I ended up playing with that expectation in mind, and therefore uh, I, I went longbowmen instead of the the musketeers. I'm not explaining what I want to. I don't think so. If, if you're confused, you can let me know in the comments. I'm really sorry. I generally am not this tongue-tied. It was just an abstract idea that flashed through my head instantly while playing, and I was like, I have to do it. So that's what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to keep raiding here, and he, of course, is still mad and whatever, um, being mean and calling me lucky. You have no skill whatsoever. Your choice to go uh, Hussar Rush was just luck, and the fact that you're already making a unit to counter my inevitable counterattack is just luck. It's not foresight on your part, but it is foresight. I mean, I got kind of lucky with the treasure, but I don't think I got lucky elsewhere. And he's uh, he's getting pissed, and he's on mills now, which is interesting because berry bushes gather faster than mills, unless I'm very, very mistaken. They do. The, the, the gathering rate goes like this. Herdables, Berry bushes mill, so he's not even gathering the fastest thing. As you can see here, he's got some musketeers everywhere. But it looks like he's only spamming musketeers, and I'm, I've only shown him Hussar. So this could be very, very good for us if he ends up thinking, all right, he's only going Hussar, and then I end up counterattacking with a huge m bunch of longbowmen. It'll be great. So my plan here is to get to the Fortress Ape, send the longbowmen range card, and upgrade my longbowmen to veteran. Plus, I get six longbow men from aging with the particular age up politician I chose, and I'm going to keep making longbow men because I'm in a position now where I can spam them fairly confidently. Not to mention, I've also shifted my economy a little bit, and I do believe I bought second age market upgrades, but if I haven't, I will buy them soon. I think. Now, I, I thought, you know what, I could definitely attack him here, but then uh, he ends up walking away, and because I have longer range, I know he hasn't seen me, so he ended up barely 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 getting away from me and it's good because he still doesn't know that I of course am going longbowman which is <laughs> kind of funny because he's probably massing musty tears thinking I'm gonna catch this guy They're, he's not gonna see this coming and I'm thinking all right He's going to mass musketeers. I'm going to secretly be massing the counter. Meanwhile, I want to keep the pressure on him with the uh, Hussar. You know, I'm going to distract him. He's going to be thinking about my Hussar. He's not going to be thinking about the Longbowman army I'm trying to mass down. My Longbowman mass, of course, isn't very good because I'm not a very good player. But there's enough there. Not to mention I am going to get to the Fortress Age and up be able to upgrade them immediately because I do have the wood and the gold for things such as these. And I'm going to keep raiding him. And the fact that, you know, I'm catching him, even though I may only kill one or two villagers, it's a time lost. And the distraction is a just a huge bonus for me in terms of my um, ability just to boom economically. Now, as you can see here, uh, with the more longbowmen coming, it, it is going to be... I, I will have time for one more uh, batch of longbowmen to pop out of my barracks before I age, but I will need to get a second barracks up to really effectively spam units, whether musketeers or longbowmen from the fortress age. You know what? I probably should age up even further if you think about it, if I'm under no pressure. But I am going to get to the fortress age, and I'm going to be ready to actually make my longbowmen even better the minute I get to that next age. As you can see, veteran longbowmen, longbowmen card from the home city shipment. And you might say, wait, you have the longbowmen upgrades in your Hussar deck? Of course, mix your units, kids. Like seriously, mixing units is sexy. I, I, it, it's funny, but really, you know, nobody uses a monotype army. A monotype army can be countered with a little bit of luck and careful, you know, knowing what's going on. As you can see there, though, I uh, send a Hussar over to wake up my explorer. I've been trying not to do the explorer glitch. Now I got my longbow mains upgraded, so now we can, from two barracks, spam longbowmen. I'm thinking at this point, you know, I will either destroy the uh, trading post or I'll draw his army out of hiding. So I end up starting to walk my longbowmen over with the anticipation of his musketeers arriving. And his musketeers do, in fact, walk up. So I'm thinking, all right, I don't want to run away too fast. So I'm going to run away actually towards my longbowmen and send my longbowmen to go walk, attack, and start um, raining down arrows above him. And I'm going to end up then pursuing him with uh, the longbowmen and of course going back and trying to take down that town center or that uh, trading post I should say not a town center and they have thinking here you know what I can age so I'm gonna actually look to go the fortress age I'm gonna age with the two falconets my logic here was my sec my fourth age cards with the British are decent enough I, get, I have two factories I have two rockets rockets would be fabulous units not to mention that I would still be able to send all my third age cards you know and I'd have access to uh, 
the factories and I get the benefit from aging. So I decided probably a little bit more helpful for me to age, even though I could have been a little bit more boomy. Started uh, sending a thousand wood, throwing up uh, houses. I thought, you know what? Falconets and rockets and the such, that would be cool. I don't do that. And then, as of course, my Longbowman army is facing his army of musketeers, I'm going to run in these hussars into his town. And I kind of do it badly there. I allow him to catch me and then I look away to send the falconets. But that's okay because while he's focusing on killing the hussar, my Longbowman are killing him there, which is a really good thing because I believe I inflict more losses, like. Uh, resource wise on him in that battle than he does by focusing on the Hussar. So as you can see here my longbowmen are cleaning up the musketeers. Not only are they the counter unit to musketeers, they're upgraded and do a lot more damage plus they have a very 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 good range. I don't think you can hit and run with longbowmen though because they're an archer and they have a charge up animation of like pulling the bow back or something. Not to mention that not to mention what? What is it that I do not want to mention? Not to mention that I didn't drag Micro because one of the better players in the game, Mike21, the ace who pointed out to me that uh, I think I actually ruined their like shot per minute count when I do that. It's actually bad. Now what I should have done here though is I should have changed my forward arrival point to that tower. That way I got units there quicker. But it's not the end of the world. As you can see here, though, I'm still going long moment, so I'm in danger at this point of a counter Hussar spam if he had the resources. I don't think he really has the resources to make a serious Hussar counterattack. But just in case, I'm going to get some more, try to get some more Hussar of my own on the field. I'm going to try to start destroying stuff in this town that I deem pertinent. The most important and immediately obvious things to destroy are his outposts. And as you can see here, he's going for an artillery foundry. Which is a foolish and it's a little bit too late in the game to go for that play. But as you can see, uh, I have shipped two Falconets from my home city. I have two more from aging up. And now I'm going to send a factory just to really kind of, you know, take my economy to that next level, if it, you will. Not to mention I'm going to make more manor houses right by his town. And really just start taking advantage of every herd on the map I can find. I, I really, though, at this point now have eaten from every herd I've scouted on the map. Which is a good thing. And I am going to pretty soon get back to uh, managing my economy a little bit better. Of course, I'm going to keep making longbowmen as I pop myself again with British, but that's okay because my goal was to do well, not to w have too many houses. And I am going to end up building a farm here, boom, and then being in time to come and see my factory get placed down, boom, right there. And I have one cannon on the way, another cannon decides to unfold there. I'm not sure why. And then I have two more falconets. So his town center is going to be gone pretty, pretty nicely. And he's in a, probably a little bit more of a worse position than he realizes. Or, uh, yeah, he is in a worse position than he realizes. Now, if I was a really good player here, what I should have done and would have done is I could have put up another tra uh, another town center immediately and started spamming villagers from two. Or I could have made more manor houses. So I do have room for substantial improvement in terms of my economic micromanagement as he continues to flame me. Of course, not to mention, and he calls me a fag again. Not to mention that I could have, um, I don't know why, by the way, he, I, know, I should mention this, he built all his houses in a pattern, that's a really bad place, I mean, obviously you get the benefit from the extra villagers, but your benefit will be that much better if you build them by a forward resource, they provide line of sight, they provide an uh, obstacle for people to walk around, as you can see, I'm very free in building my houses everywhere on the map, it's a very, very good technique to use, so I'd advise for him to do that, I tell him to look me up on YouTube, because after people flame me and call me fag, it's my favorite thing to do, self-advertisement, maybe he'll come and dislike this video, maybe he'll like, maybe he'll comment, maybe you'll see that it wasn't so much luck as strategy, I planned to raid him and I did, and you can look here, he aged with a lot more villagers than he should have, and that really allowed me to get the drop on him and get some raiding, and distract him and I kept being able just to make villagers plus I sent the five villager shipment which really boosted me up and I kept building houses as necessary which gave me an advantage not to mention that I had more military on the field earlier and then I just started raiding him and I didn't waste my military or overcommit it so to him I would say I got lucky with the manic the snow monkeys treasure but that was kind of a little bit of a misnomer because they actually posed no danger to you or your villagers all they would do is help me really get treasures so you overreacted there you built a trading post you didn't really need and you age with too many villagers too late, not enough military. So being mad at me and saying it was all luck is kind of a misnomer because it was not all luck. There was some skill and some planning involved. My switch to longbowmen was done in advance because I knew you were spamming musketeers and you should never just spam one unit if possible. 
So don't hate on me, dude. Uh, I, I, I don't bear you any ill will. I'm just breaking down the games that happened. Thank you for playing me, but but don't call me a fag. Don't call other people that. It's just rude. It's it's cla unclassless. But before I leave, let me give you a quote of the day from Sun Tzu and the Art of War. My quote today is, when it was to their advantage, they made a forward move when otherwise they stopped still. Guys, my name is BTM. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching and leaving all the love on my series. I love all the comments on my last update video, and I'll let you know what's going on there soon again thank you guys so much and until next time good luck and happy hunting btm out